Hello and welcome to this very quick how-to on how to get white armour painted very nice and quick on Phase 1 clones. Of course you can use this on any other type of miniature but we're doing Phase 1 clones from Fantasy Flight Games Legion game today. So this little dude here is our Phase 1 clone. He's had a bit of xenophil highlighting over a grey undercoat. So we've gone in there with a bit of grey sear uh, but you can use any grey primer if you want to. And uh, this clone here, nice and grey, all over grey all over grey and that's your base coat and what we did then get a rattle can not an airbrush in this scenario but a rattle can just to show you how easy it is to xenophil and we're going straight from the top with the white in this case corex white straight from the top this from angle from the front and then an angle at the back there and that's all to show you the light essentially hitting that white armor so you've got some nice shadowy grey underneath next job we're going to get some contrast apothecary white give it a good old shake this thing takes about five to ten minutes and a stir and then another shake and then you're going to get to this sort of consistency for apothecary white it did take a long time to get to this point now all we do then is get this lovely medium shade brush uh, it's a really nice brush this very soft bristles great for getting that uh, paint just just a really nice consistency onto the model we're going to dollop it on there not very pretty I know but we're going to stick it on there and we're going to brush from the base up uh, or going from the dark areas to the light areas and it's important that we're doing it in this way um, because what it will do will create this sort of light transition if you like where we're going from dark to light it means that the white elements stay white and the darker elements get a bit lighter if you like using the apothecary white and you get any recesses as well um, this contrast paint is it's just a really nice quick way of, of getting this sort of contrast element on it not, <laughs> not to pun but uh, it does really give you this contrast it's great stuff for those who have not used contrast paint before it's kind of like a gel uh, or the way I would describe it would be like a gel uh, it has the same consistency as paint but when it dries it sort of contracts so the depth parts of the miniature, the deeper parts of the recesses will get the heavier part of the pigmentation of the paint, whereas the lighter or the, the higher parts of the miniatures, it sort of contracts off of it, re retracts away from it, leaves still a bit of a pigment, which is nice, but it's a lot lighter than the recesses of the miniature. And as you can see now, we're just going from the, the underneath the backpack there and just pushing that pigment up to the top, so you can see it's going to be a lot heavier at the base a lot lighter on the top again underneath the arm there put the majority of the paint on uh, and we're just brushing just trying to get that that contrast in everywhere the important part is to try and keep these flat panels flat so as you see with the brush now we're just going from the bottom to top bottom to top and we're just trying to remove there you go just trying to remove that bit of excess paint from the very tops of the shoulder pad there same goes for this helmet and this, uh, this other shoulder pad as well. Don't want to completely cake the model in this paint because it will dry blotchy and we do not want to see blotches on these guys because uh, it will ruin that smooth finish of the armour. But you see the detail just, just absolutely popping out there now with this. Just going to check a quick check around the model now make sure we haven't got any little blobs of paint left behind sure that the tops of these white armour panels stay white and not blobby and that's pretty much it just taking a little bit of the contrast off from the faceplate because it looks a bit blobby there as well but that's it and as they say in Blue Peter here's one we made earlier now this guy's all dry you can see now all that details in there you can see the shades is really and the whites come back out as well which is even better but the the darker elements of that armor you can see a dark and you can see that where that light's hitting the top of it it's beautiful whiteness and just to show you quickly that is before apothecary white and that is after so you see there's a big difference of that that softness has come through and all we've done is apply the layer of apothecary white simple as that now you can leave it at that stage perfectly acceptable me however i'm going to go in with a little bit uh, of a highlight um, just to sort of really make those armor panels pop now this is uh, citadel airs white scar and there are other really nice airbrush paints out there with white in or you can use a white ink as well 
but uh, use these really nice thin airbrush paints, uh, not only just for airbrushes, but they're really good for edge highlighting. A uh, nice thin brush that we're going in, brand new brush, this is the first time using it. And uh, all we're going to do is just pick out those little tiny details, edges of the shoulder blades and such. And the reason we're using airbrush paint in this is because they have a natural opaqueness, if you like. Uh, so as they dry, um, you can almost see the original colour coming through the armour a bit, so it makes it more of a softer highlight. Uh, but also, mainly because they are at the right consistency that we're looking for, for layering. Nice and fluid, easy to manoeuvre, and all we're doing is draw nice little lines you can see straight away that arm is so much whiter now with just a few little white bits on it. You can also do this with a dry brush as well. Uh, what we might do in a future video is just do a dry brush to show you the difference with a dry brush and a layer. Um, essentially it's going to be more of a, a neatness and a, and a speed issue. Um, in most cases doing this figure, probably five to ten minutes edge highlighting per figure. So this is the, the time consuming element of it. Um, but the difference is surprising, it's noticeable. Again, we're just using the edge of the brush here rather than a point just to get those straight, straight edges done. And what we're going to do is continue doing this. We might fast forward it a bit in a moment just to, to get us to where we want to be. Now obviously the most important part of any Star Wars figurine is the, the headpiece and the face of one clones are no different. So we're going to do a bit of attention to detail on this. I'm just going to get right under that eye lens, which will make it really pop out in a bit. That face plate is iconic. Not quite as much as the Stormtrooper, but certainly, I mean, this whole paint scheme can be applied to, to Stormtroopers very easily. Anything with uh, with white armour. So already that's made such a difference, that face plate has really come to life. Just going to go around. Just taking the time to really enjoy. This is, this is my favourite part, just making these things pop. It's great. And they are, they are such pretty miniatures. Honestly, Flight have done a really good job with the Star Wars franchise in Legion. It's coming on leaps and bounds. Not forgetting that fantastic thin. Really coming to life a lot more now. That apothecary white has really helped with the shadowing. It's just made it such a soft blend. And it was next to no work at all. Now we're just putting in a bit of graph now. Just want to make sure these details are, are just on show, really. So, fast forwarded a little bit. We've just done all the back, we've done the other arm. And we've gone into just uh, just finishing off now. So a quick check of what we've done. So we've done a nice bit of highlighting all around the legs, the chest piece, then the back, and unbelievably, it looks more white than than if it was all painted white. So really happy with that. So far, without drying time, we're probably on ten minutes. Now, contrast black Templar. This stuff, I use this nearly as much as I use Null Oil now. It is absolutely great for shading, for recesses, for uh, things like metal as well, if you do it light enough. But what we're going to do now is still taking our nice thin brush, we're going to go painting that black details. So immediately we're going in for the visor, and just nice and carefully, we're just chucking some in there. Again, because it's contrast, it flows really nicely, it's a bit too nice, so just anything you just see there with, uh, with a bit of thumb work there, just to wipe it off the top of the armour plate. But nice and easy. Again, we don't have to thin the paint down at all. The contrast is such a nice fluid consistency, it can just be painted straight in there like that. 
No tin, too thin coats on this one, boys and girls. We are just going straight in there. Chucking it in. And we obviously have to be a bit more careful. I like to load the brush, which is great. But you've just got to be careful of those armor plates because they are so nice and neat and pretty at the moment. We don't want to get any little black blotches on them at all. And ideally, you want to be painting away from any ray surfaces. downwards instead of towards and into the figure we're painting away from all the detail of the figure and a nice thin just to get the that sort of under armour painted in again just using the thumb just to rub off any excess in case we've, we've touched any of the armour plates by accident accidents happen even to the best of us Something I didn't realise about the clones before I started painting this is actually all of their hands are black apart from the, the back of the, the hand who's got a white armour plate on but otherwise all the fingertips, palms, they're all black as well. So my original thought was I was just going to do black for, for the gun as well but what we'll probably do later on, not in this video but just a bit of the silicone grey because that's also a beautiful paint, uh, a contrast paint as well. So we're going to go on, just filling in all these bits of Under Armour. So just on the neck of the chest plate there as well. And this really helps the white just pop out even more. So at the moment we're on two rattle cans and our third part of paint. So here you can see just... Okay, I missed it there. <laughs> so we moved on, we've done a bit of a fast forward and this is what it looks like now full-on clone trooper but uh, just be careful you don't uh, don't drop him oh, I told you not to drop him okay there you go clone trooper there you are three pots of paint and two rattle cans 